Hey there everyone, I'm Pelkyfan08, and welcome back to Earthbound! Last time, we left Scaraba. We went into the desert, and we went through the dreaded pyramid. One of, if not, my least favorite dungeon of the game. And after that, Pooh left the party, so yay, no more inventory space. Happy day. <laughs> And today, it's time for us to walk into the desert once more. And before you go anywhere, make sure you talk to this guy. I'm not sure it was if it was the Dungeon Man, but there's a strange looking tower to the northwest. This key I picked up a little while ago sh shall maybe open the tower. But oh, of course. Uh, of course, since Pooja left the party, of course, I don't have any inventory space anymore. Actually, I'm just gonna do that because I know I will be uh, getting close to a f or I'm getting very close to a phone, so I can just call the Cargo Express. So, make sure you get this key. It is necessary. Next up, we have this guy. Since I'm dealing in some pretty rough stuff, I can't run my business in town. So, this guy will be selling you a couple of interesting items, like the French fry pan, a new weapon for Paula which is pretty good. Though I don't really think I will buy it just because I... Well, you know me, I don't usually make Paula attack that much anymore. In the beginning it was fine, but now, not that much. And he also gets, sells the crusher beam, which is not as good as the spectrum beam, so it's pretty useless. But the interesting thing is this. The multi-ball rocket. If you thought the big ball rocket did good damage, you haven't seen anything yet. Though the damage is a little bit random on the multi-ball rocket, it is still freaking insane. It can do anywhere from 500 to 2000 points of damage. And that, my friends, are pretty good. <laughs> Anyway, I'm trying to get... never mind. I'm trying to get away, away from some of the enemies here because, well, some of them are not really fun. And, uh, well, we will be getting a, uh, a new way to uh, fight for in a little bit, or an easier way. And since we lost a party member, of course, the enemies doesn't uh, actually get weaker. No, we have to fight the same enemies with one party member less. But really, the enemies in the desert isn't really that bad, and, well, I used the, uh, the uh, Rust Promoter DX just because I had it in my inventory, and that was a mechanical enemy, so, yeah. There you saw how much damage that can do. <laughs> anyway, this is the tower the guy was talking about. It looks like you could enter, but it's locked. Of course it is. So, let's use the key to the tower. Uh, the key worked to open the door. You may enter. To be fair, I do not want to know where the door actually is, but uh, I am gonna say the foot. Yeah, let's uh, go with that. <laughs> yeah, never mind. <clears throat> Welcome, you are inside of my body. Brick Road. Yeah, remember Brick Road? The uh, dungeon maker guy that uh, Jeff met up with when he was on his way to rescue Ness and Paula. He was talking about getting a, uh, a little upgrade, I guess, with the help of, of uh, Dr. Randonuts. Well, this is it. He turned into his own dungeon. This is Dungeon Man. One of the best dungeons in the game, I think, because this place is very different from, well, almost all of the other dungeons in the game. But anyway, the enemies on the first floor here are just enemies that we met up with earlier, so there's really no point in me showing this fight at all. We met up with these guys in the uh, Foresight department store, remember? After Paula got kidnapped. Don't worry though, there will be new enemies, and some of them... actually quite nasty. My statistics show that 70% of the people go to the right first. Brick Road. Well, we could. But I'm gonna be a little bit of a rebel, and I'm gonna go over here. Because, we have this thing. If you check into this bench, it's just like checking into a hotel. Brick Road. Yeah, check this bench, and you will get a full heal. And this is also an awesome place, if Jeff got any of the broken items that he can fix. 
because this is free. And, well, you can't say no to free. <laughs> it's a free in that you can use if Jeff wants to uh, fix a couple of items here and there. But we also have a phone here, so I will be calling the Escargo Express, and they are going to take some I items away from me. Now, if uh, Pooh was the one with the uh, the Hawk's Eye when he left the party, just call the, call, call the Escargo Express, and they shall have it. They, they will have it for you, so no problems there. Anyway, we also have a doctor and a healer here. I just want to show that off, so... Uh, yeah, this is actually a very, very cool dungeon. It pretty much got everything you need. The only thing I maybe not not be that big of a fan of is that yes, there are a lot of enemies, and right now it only feels like they are wasting my time. But this guy will be going down into his anyway, so well, never mind. If Ness attacked, he would go down into his. There we go. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, I said this is probably one of my favorite dungeons, yes, because it is so different from what we are used to see. It's not the, okay, you go from point A to point B, no. This is a maze. Keep this board in mind. Yeah, you do that, because we will be seeing it a couple of times throughout this dungeon. Though not on the same run, no. <laughs> Even though you can't get up there now, you may be able to later. Yeah, that too. Some of the items here we will not be able to get until later, and oh wow, you actually went through the desert. I applaud you, Mr. Excargo Expressor. <laughs> let's see, also there was a ATM machine if you really needed money, but uh, let's see. I want you to take the hieroglyph copy, since I don't need that anymore. I want you to take the key to the tower, since we already opened it, so there's really no point in having that. And let's see, I think everything here is fine. So, oh yes, there we go. I want you to take the bag of Dragonite, because I won't be using them right now at least. You could also give the Hawkeye, or give them the Hawkeye, but it's not that far away to actually need the Hawkeye, so it's... Well, it's up to you really, but I'm gonna keep it, and that's a dead end, dude. Wow, apparently he's very good at his job. <laughs> Place an item at the dead end. You, you are free to take it whenever you want. Brick Road, thank you. I will say I really like Brick Road. I mean, uh, oh, the uh, the character Brick Road who really wanted to become a dungeon uh, make, or he was a dungeon maker and he turned into a dungeon himself. I actually really like that story. I mean, it's stupid, sure, but. It, I, I, I really like it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, not only is this dungeon very fun to go through and all that, but it is also actually a little bit difficult because it is actually a very long dungeon. And it is also tricky if you don't have a map. I will be uh, linking a map in the video description once again to starman.net just to help you out because this place is actually very confusing. While you explore the dungeon, why don't you make a pit stop? Okay, let's do that. I wonder why I'm in the restroom right here. Just who am I? What is life all about? Oh, I'm sorry. Did I make you nervous? I'm not dangerous, don't worry. I have no idea who that guy is, but... He's deep, man. He's deep. <laughs> anyway, we have another good night bench here. Oh, right, we... I, uh... I thought there, oh yeah, you want to rest, but no, you always rest. Oh well, it doesn't really take that long, so it's no big deal. Now, another thing that I'm not the biggest fan of, which is really just a pointless nitpick really, is that there is a little bit too many items in this place, I think. Since we just lost a, an, an, a party member, which also means we also lost a lot of inventory space, I think they could have waited a little bit by giving you all these items, but once again, it's just a little nitpick, it's not the big deal at all. <laughs> of course, I'm the one who's, uh, <laughs> who is uh, complaining that, oh, I'm getting too many items, yeah. <laughs> of course, of course. Anyway, go up here, and I was originally planning on just skipping this one, but it's actually quite a good item. We get a super plush bear, which is, of course, a upgraded teddy bear. I can't remember how much HP it actually got. It will probably uh, uh, 
pop up on screen, but uh, it's uh, it's a pretty good item, yeah. And you know me, I already I uh, already like the teddy bear item, so yeah, why not? In that box there, we get a snake. I don't care about the snake, so I'm gonna ignore it. We will be able to go through Dungeon Man multiple times, and actually we kind of have to, so. There is no shame in just skipping a couple of items, the first time at least. Anyway, we have a lot of ropes here to go up. All these, except for this one, will pretty much just bring you to a dead end with a billboard. So, I'm not gonna waste my time, or your time, so I'm just gonna go up this one and... Okay. <laughs> and I'm gonna continue on my merry way. Now, we are now on the second floor. Yeah, thank you, uh, Dungeon Man, that was very nice of you. And now the real enemies will be starting to uh, pop up. And the enemies in here can be a little bit dangerous, yes, I'm not gonna lie. They can uh, pretty much destroy you if you're <laughs> if you're uh, not careful. And I believe I actually missed a, uh, a present box on the first floor. There is a box, oh, there's a billboard that says yeah, the easiest uh, items are usually the most disappointing, and in that box we also get a, uh, or we get $5. <laughs> it's, it's a little funny little thing, but uh, yeah, I skipped it, I don't know why I did that, I guess I thought it was an enemy. Anyway, familiar face for those who actually played Mother 1. This is the Lesser Mook. This guy is actually pretty dangerous. He is weak to fire and very resistant to ice. Though, I still think ice isn't a bad idea to use against him, because you can still solidify his body, but once again, you should just try to take him out as fast as possible, because he will be using freeze on you a lot. And even his freeze alpha will hurt like hell. So be careful, and don't think that, yeah, I'll be fine. I mean, I, I can survive a couple of freezes. They also get freeze beta, which can probably... Uh, it's standing right there around my belly, but thank you for that. Their freeze beta can probably one-shot at least both Ness... Uh, I mean, Paula and Jeff, so don't take them lightly. This music is one of my greatest accomplishments. Yeah, it is actually a very catchy theme, so I agree on that one. It smells like flowers here. If you can smell it, your nose must be stuffy. Yeah, it's always stuffy, so um, I'm not really surprised, though. <laughs> anyway, up this rope, and down here, we have another present box with a... Uh, yay, I actually remembered. With a pizza in it. But, of course, now it also means that my inventory is full once again, since Paula had to take that one. In that box, we have a sudden guts pill. You know me. I do not care about sudden guts pills, so that is one of the boxes I'm gonna ignore to the end of the game. <laughs> and here we get a PSI caramel, but I will be right back, I'm just gonna throw away a couple of items. There we go, the PSI caramel is mine. I don't know why I actually kept a mummy wrap in my inventory, the item is good and all, but it's also kind of pointless I think. But anyway though. We have a couple of enemies here just walking around. We can't fight these guys, thank god. I mean, mad ducks aren't really that bad, but... I do like the touch that at least two of the enemies here are enemies from Winters. Which is where we met up with Brick Road the first time. You see, we also have the, uh, the gruff, uh, goat, or whatever they were called. So, ah, uh, gruffy goat, yeah, there we go. So, I actually really like that, it's a nice little touch. And also, if we go down here, we also have uh, the slimy little piles. Though we didn't meet up with them in uh, Winters, but it's still a nice touch that they're actually there. Anyway, we have another bench, which I think I'm just gonna... ...stay on a little bit, just to uh, be on the safe side. We are pretty much at the end of this place already, but... ...it's still nice to at least be fully healed. And here we get a wet towel. Thank you. Don't really need it, but thank you. <laughs> But from uh, this though to a little bit more serious matter, yeah, I know, I've been very, very, very lazy the last couple of days, but uh, a lot of things have been happening the la for in the last weeks, three weeks uh, or so. First of all, 
my sister. Yeah, I'm gonna just stop here and uh, talk about this. We are, uh, by the way, at the uh, top floor already. My sister is pregnant. And she... Uh, something happened on Tuesday or Wednesday or something like that. So she had to go to the hospital just to check stuff out. Just to be sure. There wasn't anything bad, but of course, I wasn't really... It didn't... Uh, it wasn't really tempting to actually record. And uh, just thinking about, oh, is she going to be okay? Is the baby going to be okay? And all that stuff. So I didn't record that. That and... For some reason... A couple of weeks ago, um, I managed to get myself a girlfriend. Yeah. I did not expect that, it just suddenly happened. I'm not gonna talk much about her, because she's shy. <laughs> but she is amazing. She's probably not watching this, so I can pretty much say what I want, sure, but... She... She is incredible. Anyway, though! Away with all this happiness, and let's hey say hey to a familiar face. Welcome! Oh, he fully healed us. Well, that bench was useless then. Long time no see. Mr. Jeff, we met in Winters a long time ago. Oh, I remember. Ambrick Road. Dr. Ananas finally made me Dungeon Man. If you want, I'll come with you guys for a while. The return hole is over there. Jump in that hole and then walk out. Well, thank you. So... We want to exit Dungeon Man again now, and as you see, there is a billboard there, which is blocking another hole. Don't worry, we will be getting that one soon enough. For now though, return hole, jump in with all your courage. Brick road. <laughs> okay, let's do that. And... Holy crap. <laughs> that's not nice, Dungeon Man. Wow, already, that's... I didn't expect that to either, actually. Ness is now level 49, and I know what's gonna happen at level 49. Maximum HP by 2, PP by 2, and he gets the power of Rockin' Gamma. Hell yeah. That spell is freaking awesome, so yes, I'm really looking forward to showing that one off. <laughs> anyway, another present box on the way out. We get an IQ capsule. I'll be right back once again. And since Jeff now has gotten a couple of pretty good level ups when it comes to IQ, I'm gonna use the IQ capsule on Paula. Because, well, more PP is always good, especially with her free spells, and I love it. And remember this one? Keep this board in mind. Yeah, he wasn't kidding. We are now back at the beginning. And we have enemies that really, really, really want to die. That's fine by me. There we go. A little jump cut there because I also went and I healed up because one of those mystical records, of course, got a smash attack on me. But anyway, now, if any of you played Mother 1 or watched my playthrough of it, this may be familiar to you. Right now, we have Dungeon Man with us. He's a party member, just like Eve back in the first game. The problem is, he is very slow, and he can also do that, yeah. It's not a bad move, he gives a great big hug. It will solidify a enemy, which is good, but I kind of prefer when he just attacks, because he will be doing, like, big ball rocket type damage, which is awesome. Anyway, Jeff is now level 44. Offense up by 3, defense by 1, guts by 2, vitality by 1, ooh, IQ by 3. I think I know what I'm gonna do in between episodes. Uh, luck by 2, HP by 7, wow. That is great, Jeff. And as you see, Dungeon Man, even though his little sprite is a little bit odd, a uh, little sprite, his sprite is a little bit odd, it's... Well, it's following us, at least. <laughs> And in the last episode, I talked about, yeah, I know that the cameraman will pop up at a oasis. Well, I was thinking about the wrong oasis, because here he is. Pictures taken instantaneously, I'm a photographic genius if I do say so myself. Okay, get ready for an instant memory. Look at the camera, ready, say fuzzy pickles. Wow, what a great photograph, it will always bring back the fondest of memories. The day we got a freaking giant in our party. Oh yes, those are the fondest of memories. Indeed. <laughs> oh, well, okay, I thought it was gonna be the cute UFO. 
This is the high-class UFO. I don't know why they bothered, because in this desert, there's actually two UFO enemies. It's this guy, and well, we'll really see the cute little UFO back in Dungeon Man, or you probably saw a little bit of it. <laughs> that, of course, is the enemy that we met up with in Dusty Dudes. In this desert, we have this one, and then there's the beautiful UFO. And they are basically the same. They can shoot you with the beam, they can confuse you, and I think they can heal you, but or heal themselves, sorry. But that's it. I don't understand why there are two UFO enemies here. But anyway. Paula is now level 46. Offense up by 2, luck by 1, HP by 2, PP by 3. Oh my god! Okay then. Things are gonna die. Faster! <laughs> Paula got the power of Freeze Omega, the ultimate freeze spell. This is gonna be fun, I assure you. <laughs> now, when you go down here, oh my god, there's a lot of enemies. Actually, there's a lot of enemies regardless. I don't think I'll be able to sneak past this. Oh well, let's at least try. I think Dungeon Man is still with me at least. Actually, I am just gonna show this off. As you see, it's an incredibly expensive spell. But I want to show it off, so let's go. Actually, I'm gonna have both of you bash. It's gonna be a l uh oh. Okay, good. That's pretty cool. <laughs> and there you finally see Dungeon Man's attacks too, almost 400. That's pretty good. I am not gonna lie, that is pretty sweet. I also want to show this off, but it's kind of wasted if I do that now, so uh, maybe later. Or I will most likely be spamming it like there's no tomorrow later on though, so don't worry, you will see it. <laughs> oh wow, that was a lot of experience. Awesome. God, oh no, I am getting caught in the palm trees. I can't move. Well, if I cannot move, it is okay. Ness, it makes me sad, but I must say goodbye here. At my eternal resting place. Yeah. Sadly, Dungeon Man is not with us anymore. Oh wow, how the hell was that a back attack on him? Wow, okay, I'm not complaining. But at least it's not as sad as, uh, you know, Eve's goodbye. Yeah. If they actually did that once again in this game, I swear I would rage because I would be crying my eyes out. <laughs> well, not really, but... That was sad, though. Oh, anyway, though. Uh, yeah, Dungeon Man is no longer with us. And we have a dude here. A scary place called Deep Darkness is in the other side of the river. The monsters are very strong, and you can lose your health just by wandering in the swamp. Do you want to cross the river, even though you know it's a stupid idea? Yes, I do. Well, the swamp, swamp is bottomless. Even if you're swimming, you'll be dragged in. It's a different story if you have a submarine. Where the heck can we find a submarine in the desert, you may ask? Well, how about we ask our good old pal, Dungeon Man? A submarine? Well, I do believe that I have one in my old vehicle collection. Well, please enter. So, once again, we need to go back up to the top floor of Dungeon Man. But I will not be doing that in this episode, actually, you will probably not see that at all. Because I will be ending it off right here. So, next time, we are gonna go to Deep Darkness. The area where we actually need the Hawkeye. And maybe we will also be seeing a couple of familiar faces. Slash... Well, vomit. We'll see. <laughs> so, I thank you all for watching, and I see you all later.